Walk into any marine dealership and you'll see two distinct philosophies hanging on the same wall. On one side, Mercury, American engineering focused on raw power and aggressive styling, engines designed to dominate. On the other side, Yamaha and Suzuki, Japanese precision and conservative ratings, engines designed to last. They have the same horsepower numbers on the cowling, the same price tags, but completely different machines underneath. Today, we're pulling back the covers on what separates American and Japanese outboard engineering, the design philosophies that create these differences the real-world performance that results, and what it means when you're choosing which engine hangs on your transom. Let's dive in. Start with how they approach power. American outboards, particularly Mercury, extract maximum horsepower from every cubic centimeter of displacement. The philosophy is simple. Give customers the most power possible from the smallest, lightest package. This means running higher compression ratios, more aggressive cam timing, and engine speeds that push components harder. Mercury's Verado line exemplifies this approach. The V6 Verado makes 200 horsepower from 2.6 liters of displacement. That's aggressive power density achieved through supercharging, sophisticated fuel injection, and engineering that optimizes every aspect of combustion. The result is impressive performance and competitive weight. Japanese manufacturers take a different path. Yamaha and Suzuki typically use larger displacement to achieve the same horsepower numbers. Their engines run at lower compression ratios and more conservative engine speeds. Components are sized larger than minimum requirements, which creates built-in margins. Take Yamaha's F200. This engine uses 2.8 liters of displacement to make 200 horsepower. That's more displacement than the Mercury for the same power output. The engine runs at lower stress levels, which extends component life. Yamaha chose durability over maximum power density. This fundamental difference shows up throughout their product lines. American engines prioritize performance per pound and performance per liter. Japanese engines prioritize longevity and reliability over ultimate power density. The engineering philosophy extends to how they build them. American outboards embrace complexity when it delivers performance advantages. Variable valve timing, advanced supercharging systems, sophisticated engine management with dozens of sensors. Mercury and other American manufacturers see technology as the path to better performance. The Mercury Racing 450R uses a supercharged V8 powerhead with variable valve timing, advanced fuel injection, and engine management that monitors and adjusts countless parameters in real time. This complexity enables 450 horsepower from a package that still fits on a transom. The engineering is impressive, and when everything works correctly, the performance is outstanding. Japanese manufacturers favor proven simplicity. Yamaha's F200 uses a naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder design with straightforward fuel injection and basic engine management. No supercharger, no variable valve timing on most models, no exotic technology, just solid engineering executed well. Suzuki follows similar principles. The DF200 uses a 2.9-liter inline four with conventional architecture. The fuel injection is sequential and sophisticated enough to run efficiently, yet simple enough to diagnose and repair without factory software. The engine management monitors essential parameters without the complexity that creates new failure points. This difference matters long term. Complex systems deliver advantages when new, yet they create service challenges as engines age. Japanese simplicity means fewer things can go wrong and easier repairs when something does fail. Now, look at how they handle cooling. Mercury uses closed cooling systems on many of their larger outboards, particularly the Verado line. The engine block and head see only freshwater coolant, while raw water circulates through a heat exchanger. This protects internal components from saltwater corrosion and allows tighter tolerances in the engine design. The closed cooling system adds complexity, heat exchangers, expansion tanks, additional pumps and plumbing, more components that need maintenance. When it works, the system delivers excellent corrosion protection. When something fails, diagnosis and repair require more knowledge and specialized parts. Yamaha and Suzuki typically use traditional raw water cooling on most models. Seawater or lake water gets pumped directly through the engine block and heads. 
This approach is simpler, with fewer components and less to go wrong. The trade-off is increased corrosion potential and the need for more robust internal materials. Japanese manufacturers address the corrosion challenge through material selection and protective coatings. Yamaha uses their Phase 5 paint system with multiple layers of corrosion protection. Internal passages receive special treatments. Sacrificial anodes are positioned strategically throughout the powerhead. The result is engines that handle saltwater exposure well despite using simpler cooling systems. The Japanese approach accepts some additional corrosion risk in exchange for reduced complexity and easier serviceability. The difference shows up in maintenance requirements. American high-performance outboards often demand more frequent service. Mercury's supercharged engines require oil changes every 50 to 100 hours depending on use. The supercharger oil needs changing. The sophisticated fuel systems need quality fuel and proper winterization. These engines reward careful maintenance and punish neglect. The complexity means more things need attention. Belts that drive superchargers. Additional filters engine management systems that need software updates. Owners who follow the service schedule get excellent performance. Owners who defer maintenance face expensive repairs. Japanese outboards typically have longer service intervals and simpler maintenance schedules. Yamaha recommends oil changes every 100 hours or annually for most models. The maintenance procedures are straightforward. Change oil and filter. Replace lower unit lube check zincs, inspect cooling system. Most owners can perform routine service themselves with basic tools. The simplicity extends to parts availability and cost. Japanese manufacturers design engines where common wear items are inexpensive and readily available. Water pump impellers cost $20 to $40. Oil filters are standard sizes. Lower unit seals and gaskets are affordable. American high-performance engines often use proprietary parts that cost more. Then there's how they sound and feel. American outboards prioritize performance over refinement. Mercury engines, especially the high output models, have aggressive exhaust notes and mechanical sounds that enthusiasts love. The supercharger whine on a Verado becomes part of the experience. These engines sound powerful because they are powerful. The vibration characteristics reflect the performance focus. American manufacturers accept more vibration if it means achieving better power output. Engine mounts and isolation systems minimize what transfers to the boat, yet you can feel these engines working when you run them hard. Japanese manufacturers emphasize smoothness and quiet operation. Yamaha engines run remarkably quietly at all speeds. The inline four-cylinder configuration is inherently balanced. Add sophisticated engine mounts and vibration damping systems, and the result is engines that nearly disappear during operation. Suzuki follows similar principles. Their engines prioritize refinement alongside reliability. The DF200 runs smoothly enough that passengers can have normal conversations at cruising speed. The mechanical sounds stay muted. The exhaust note is subdued. This reflects different target customers. American manufacturers build engines for enthusiasts who want performance and don't mind some mechanical character. Japanese manufacturers build engines for customers who want their outboards to work quietly and fade into the background. The weight difference tells its own story. American manufacturers achieve competitive weights through aggressive engineering and materials. Mercury's Verado V6 200 horsepower model weighs around 515 pounds. That's impressive for a supercharged V6 with closed cooling. The weight comes from extensive use of aluminum, composite materials, and careful design. Japanese naturally aspirated engines of similar power typically weigh more. Yamaha's F200 weighs around 560 pounds depending on shaft length and configuration. The extra weight comes from larger displacement, heavier construction, and more conservative component sizing. Suzuki's DF200 weighs around 550 pounds, again, heavier than the comparable Mercury. The weight penalty buys durability and simplicity. Japanese manufacturers accept the extra pounds because their customers prioritize longevity over ultimate power to weight ratios. For smaller boats where every pound matters, the American weight advantage can be significant. 
For larger boats and applications where reliability matters more than ultimate performance, the Japanese weight penalty becomes acceptable. Now look at how they handle real-world abuse. American high-performance outboards deliver outstanding performance when operated within their design parameters. Run them hard, maintain them properly, cool them adequately, and they perform brilliantly. Push them beyond their limits or defer maintenance and problems develop quickly. Mercury's sophisticated engines monitor themselves constantly. Sensors watch temperatures, pressures, and operating conditions. When something goes wrong, the engine management system intervenes to prevent damage. Guardian mode reduces power to protect the engine. This works well when the sensors and software function correctly. Japanese engines tolerate abuse better. Yamaha and Suzuki build in margins that allow engines to survive operator mistakes. Run one a bit low on oil. The generous bearing clearances and robust construction provide cushion. Operate with a partially clogged cooling system. The oversized passages and conservative power output prevent immediate damage. This tolerance for imperfection reflects different design priorities. American engineers assume competent operators and proper maintenance. Japanese engineers design for the real world where mistakes happen and maintenance gets deferred. Commercial operators who run engines hard every day tend to favor Japanese reliability. Recreational boaters who want maximum performance and maintain their equipment carefully often choose American power. The warranty and support structures differ too. Mercury provides strong warranty coverage and has an extensive dealer network across North America. Their service departments handle sophisticated diagnostics and complex repairs. When something goes wrong with a high-tech Mercury, you typically need dealer support. The parts network emphasizes genuine Mercury components. Aftermarket support exists, yet many repairs require proprietary parts available only through Mercury dealers. This ensures quality repairs yet can increase costs and limit service location options. Yamaha and Suzuki also have excellent dealer networks. Their simpler engines mean more repair shops can work on them competently. The parts are more standardized. A competent marine mechanic can diagnose and repair most issues without factory diagnostic software. The aftermarket support for Japanese engines is robust. Third-party parts manufacturers offer alternatives for many components. This competition keeps prices reasonable and provides options when genuine parts are unavailable. The simpler architecture means owners with mechanical aptitude can perform more repairs themselves. So which approach is better? Neither philosophy is universally superior. They represent different priorities and serve different customers. Understanding the differences helps you choose the right engine for your needs. American outboards excel when you want maximum performance, cutting-edge technology, and competitive weight. They reward careful maintenance and deliver impressive capabilities. They suit performance-oriented boaters who maintain their equipment properly and have access to good dealer support. Japanese outboards excel when you prioritize longevity, simplicity, and tolerance for imperfect operating conditions. They suit boaters who want engines that work reliably with minimal drama. They appeal to commercial operators, cruisers, and recreational users who value dependability over ultimate performance. The choice depends on how you use your boat. Bass tournament anglers who need every bit of performance often choose Mercury. Commercial fishing operations that need engines to work every day tend toward Yamaha or Suzuki. Recreational boaters fall anywhere on that spectrum based on their priorities. Your mechanical aptitude matters too. Comfortable working on engines yourself? Japanese simplicity helps. Prefer to leave service to dealers? American sophistication works fine if you have good dealer access. Your budget for long-term ownership influences the decision. American high-performance engines can cost more to maintain and repair. Japanese engines typically have lower operating costs over their lifetime. Factor in how long you plan to keep the boat and how many hours you'll run annually. The market is shifting though. Japanese manufacturers are adding technology to stay competitive. Yamaha's newer models include features like variable camshaft timing and more sophisticated engine management. Suzuki's latest engines use dual overhead cams and advanced fuel injection. The gap is narrowing as Japanese companies embrace complexity where it delivers clear benefits. American manufacturers are improving reliability and serviceability. 
Mercury's newer engines incorporate lessons learned from earlier high-tech models. The engineering is still aggressive, yet reliability has improved significantly. The service intervals are extending and maintenance requirements are becoming more reasonable. Both sides are learning from each other. American manufacturers recognize that ultimate performance means nothing if reliability suffers. Japanese manufacturers understand that modern customers expect sophisticated features and strong performance alongside traditional reliability. The result is convergence toward the middle. Future engines will likely blend American performance focus with Japanese reliability emphasis. The differences will persist, yet become less dramatic as both sides adopt best practices from each other. So, what engine are you running and why did you choose it? American performance or Japanese reliability? Drop your experience in the comments. Real-world feedback from actual boaters helps everyone understand what really matters on the water. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.